1999, while here in the University of Lagos, we had a program, and I had been hearing of him, but at that particular program, you know, amongst the brethren that I asked to organize the program, they came to meet me and they said, this is who we think is best suited to minister to us at this program where we're expecting the touch of the Lord. And even though I'd seen him from afar in 1999, he came here in Unilag to come and minister. It was a time of God's visitation. And from 1999, I've been under his leadership one way or the other until eventually I was transferred to Akoka Group and he has been my group pastor since then. Some years back, he called me and said, I want you to go and lead a church. And I said, Pastor, I'm not the type of person that can be a pastor. Because I didn't think I had what it took to be a pastor because of the nature of my job. And he said, well, take your time and pray. About a year after that, he called me again. He said, come and lead a church. I said, Pastor, I don't think I have the grace to be a pastor because my father is a pastor. I know what is passing through. And so, almost about eight years ago, he said, okay, since you are not ready to be a pastor, I want you to go to a particular district. Faith district then, we're roughly about 80. He said, since you have not decided to be a pastor, I want you to go and be the acting coordinator, as we were called then. He said, you are not a pastor here too, but just go there and be the acting coordinator of Faith District. About eight years ago, I've been acting from then till now. Praise the Lord. I don't know what he saw. I did not see what he was seeing, but he was seeing something. And he kept on telling me, over the years, concentrate on your ministry, the young people. And the Lord has blessed the ministry through his leadership. And when we were to start with the young adults, he also called me. He said he had a dream. And in that dream, the Lord was warning him and the leaders of the church that we needed to concentrate on our young people because we're losing a lot of young people. And when he told me again, as usual, I said, sir, <laughs> that's a big assignment. I don't think I can do it. He said, you are the one God has said should do the job. I didn't think I was capable. I didn't think I had the competency. But there was something he saw, which obviously I did not see. And from that day, he called me one day and he prayed. And my ministry went to a new level. And the Lord has been blessing us through his ministry. He's my leader. He's my spiritual mentor. He's the one that the Lord used to first give me these assignments. He's the one the Lord has been using to renew the calling over the years. Join me as I walk onto the stage. My leader, my mentor, my group pastor, Pastor Andrew Umoro. Keep clapping until he comes on stage. Keep clapping. He's a man the Lord has been using. The Lord has separated him to the gospel, like Paul said in Romans 1.1. You are welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. I'm so happy to see you. You look beautiful and handsome. And your faith choir. They sang so well. Where are they? Come on, you. You are going places. One day we charter a plane and take them to somewhere outside to go and sing. I've always been blessed in my life and ministry. And whenever I want to introduce myself, I'll tell them I'm the pastor of a Coca group where the life started. But now I introduce myself a little bit slightly differently. I say I'm the father of faith church. Yeah. 
it gives me a lot of satisfaction because one day, no matter how long you stay on this stage, you will leave. No matter how much you desire to stay and how much work you desire to do, a day comes where you just have to step aside. But then, the problem is, if you don't have successors, because if you don't have successors to keep the movement going, then your success could become a failure. Why do you think Donald Trump is bringing J.D. Vance, 39 years old? Because he's looked at the future that they nearly killed him, by the way, some few days ago. He knew that America needs a younger person. And I believe very strongly in my heart of heart that this ministry needs young people. And now you are positioned to do something that will align you to the destiny God created you for. You see, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, all of us are created to fulfill destiny. And we approach the destiny from different angles and we try our feeble hands on achieving our calling. But then sometimes, very often times, some young people are unable to fulfill their destiny because something just cut them short. Or something distracted them. And when I see a star, I recognize a star. I see many stars in you. And I'm very pleased with you. And I'm very happy for you. Your future is just starting. The best is here to come. All that we are doing now is analog. You, you are going digital. You're already using gadgets that we don't understand. All right? I was in Minnesota some few days ago to attend a youth conference like this. I'm coming, and then the young people are, they almost left their seats. And so they're coming to where I was. They say, welcome, sir. We are very happy to see you. And they were almost... This, this, uh, this stopping the rhythm of the program, I have to beg them. I said, wait a little bit at the end of the service. At the end of the service came, I had to come up two times to, to pray. Preferred that impartation that took place because I could feel a connection between us and them. I could feel a connection between the anointing God given to me and the anointing that is just bubbling in those young people. And that is how I feel this morning. And the service is over. They wanted to take photographs with me. I said, come on. Those who brought me the protocol, Pastor, it's time to go. I said, no, it's not time to go yet. I need to take photographs photograph with every one of them. If they want to post a hundred times, I'm ready. Come on. What do you want me to do? If, if we walk away from young men and young people walk away from us, we don't have a future. I can say this a hundred times. If we drive young people away, we are going to live to regret it. I've stuck my neck. I've risked my life several times. Somebody told me, if you go the way you're going, then you may not be on stage again because they are going to report you to the extent that your own father that loves you so much is going to begin to suspect you. But I stood up because I know that I'm living for something. Nobody, nobody can kill my dream. Because if you kill my dream, you have killed me already. And so I decided to stand up to live to the fulfillment of the purpose why God created me. Of course, I've been so much several times. And God gave me courage and deliver to say to anybody that this is why, for this reason, for this purpose, I have come to this world. And this is what God has said to me. Please do whatever you want to do with me, but don't take away God's purpose from my life. And I'm happy to tell you today that that purpose is still very much alive. This man carries fire. This man carries an anointing. This man carries an auction. I've observed that everywhere I go, and I just see something simple, the Lord backs it up. Amen. And today we are going to say something about you. 
Your amen is like that, amen of old people. We are going to prophesy about your future. Somebody is going to see his future or her future in this ministration. And somebody is going to connect with the ministry that has been abandoned for one reason or the other. There's going to be a reconnection with your purpose, even this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you in particular. Can you raise up your hands? Let's pray now. Father, in Jesus' name, I know that even though we are speaking and addressing a crowd here of young people, there's somebody here that you are talking to directly. There's somebody here that this message is pointed at. There's somebody here that this encouragement is going to directly, hitting you and touching you and reviving you and waking up the giants, the giant that is in you. Now I say to you, reconnect with your ministry. I'm speaking to somebody now. I'm talking to somebody now. I see the powers of darkness. They want to remove your thinking faculty by creating some depression around you. You can't bring depression on somebody who has a great, great, great ministry. Anything the devil plays on the head of that person, I command clear immediately now in Jesus' name. I see a branch. There is a root. There is a stem. But then when it gets to a certain, meter, a certain meters, then there is one branch here and one branch here. Towards the left, there's dryness. Towards the right, there's fruitfulness. I pray that for somebody on the crossroad of his or her life, May the Lord help you to choose correctly. You will go to the right. I'm speaking to you now. I'm communicating with you now. You will move to the right. You will not move to the left. To the left. You will not land in a dead end. You will never come to a situation where you are confused. You will not come to a situation where you don't know what to do anymore. Bible says, and when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter unto me and a strong tower unto my, my life. I pray for you now. The Lord will be a shield. You will need to be protected because you carry something. Therefore, you need to be protected because you carry an anointing. Therefore, you need to be protected. Because you carry grace, therefore you need to be protected. Because you carry destiny, therefore you need to be protected. Because you carry a future, therefore you need to be protected. Be protected in the Lord in the name of Jesus. Sometimes your heart is beating so fast. As if they want to bring anxiety attack. As if they want to bring something that will just disrupt and distort the rhythm of your person. Nobody can plant something evil where God has planted something good. Otherwise, the tasks will be collected and sent into the fire and they shall be burnt off. Every task in your life right now be burnt off by the consuming fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I command immediately anything that is taking over the center of your heart shall be overwhelmed and overthrown by the power of the Holy Spirit. Anything that is an obstacle in the present time or that will be an obstacle in the future, the Lord has recognized it already. The problem you're supposed to have 10 years from now, 15 years from now, if Jesus tarries, that problem will not materialize. But the glory that you are supposed to have, the breakthrough you are supposed to have, and the expansion and illumination you are supposed to have, I speak to your spirit. I speak to your soul and your body. Move towards that direction. Embrace the fire. Embrace the anointing. Embrace the power. Embrace the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the spirit encircle you. Let the spirit endure you. Let the spirit possess you. The spirit of the living God. And then we'll be able to take over the world. Souls will be converted. In every continent of our world, souls will come into the kingdom of God. God will use you more than you have ever expected. More than you have ever imagined. The Lord will save you from danger. He will preserve your life. Thank you, Father. 
In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody is going to say, Please have your seats. We are talking around the subject, the promise of the Holy Spirit, His power and His faith, His gift in the life of a believer. His power, His gift in the life of a believer. You see, the Old Testament prophets, they exercise profound, elaborate, a very extended manifestation of power. So what it is, the, the deed, we under the New Testament economy, it appears we are not even able to do them. How we have an Elijah in our present days that can just go to Ahab and say, as the Lord God liveth, and as my soul liveth, there shall not be rain nor dew until I say it. Can we have an Elisha that someone, a very senior in the military of Syria, is now suffering from leprosy? Now they brought him to Israel, and Elisha is saying, Let him come to me, and he will know that there's a prophet in Israel. What confidence do we have that anymore? When we see ministers now go to palaces, they don't go to brag about the power of God, they go to beg for money. Because you can't give what you don't have. Those prophets, men, they were really heavily anointed. They could prophesy, they could see into the future. Isaiah was prophesying about a future that lies more than 700 years ahead. He says in Isaiah chapter 9, He says unto us, a child is born, and unto us a son is given. He didn't see the church age. He didn't see the period of grace. He says, as soon as the son is given, then the government of the world will be centralized around him. He saw Israel as a center of blessing in the kingdom that will be established on earth here under the leadership of Jesus Christ. But he didn't see the church age. He didn't see the period of grace. Then you come to Daniel. Daniel was that man that the king had a dream and forgot the dream. I mean, he should blame himself for forgetting his dream. But in those days of autocracy, your own mistake can lead to somebody's death. And so he's asking the wise men to tell him the dream and the interpretation. Otherwise, their right to life will be taken away from them. And Daniel happened to be one of the wise people. He went calmly, peacefully, and noiselessly to the palace. And he said, why is this decree so urgent? Can you give me a few days? Me and my colleagues, we're going to tell you the dream and the interpretation thereof. So don't kill anybody. What confidence. And so they prayed, and the Bible says, the Lord gave the vision to him by a revelation by night. Do we still see visions? Do we still know where our society is going? Can we still accurately predict what is going to happen in the future? Now, a few days later, Daniel received the, the secrets, and he came and narrated the dream to the king from the beginning to the very end, and an excellent interpretation. The king fell down with his face to the ground, the war ruler at that time, and he said, I've never seen any man like you, because wisdom and might belongs to God. Somebody say amen. Your amen is subdued. Let me tell you, if you are just somebody that talks and you don't get anything done, they're going to get you out of the pulpit sooner or later. Because they're not going to find you useful. This man was useful to the king, useful to his nation, and useful to the world. He could tell you something, everything pinpoint. But then, when he now looked into the future again, he gave his Daniel 70-week prophecy. 
And in that 70 weeks, according to Daniel, on the 69th week, the Messiah will be what? Cut off. That is, he will be killed. Then Daniel said, there's going to be another week. Because a week in Daniel's prophecy represents seven. That is, a week is seven. So, by the time you now talk about the last week now, that is seven years of the Antichrist divided into two equal halves. The first three and a half years will be the period of peace, and the last three and a half years, Antichrist will show the world who he is. But Daniel again did not see the church age. He didn't see the church age. As powerful as they were, they had a limitation in their dispensation, dispensational limitation. And that carried on until Jesus came. And now Jesus had ended his ministry. His life was cut short, but after three short days, he resurrected from the grave. Your Jesus is not in the grave. Your Jesus is alive forevermore. Tell somebody, be excited about this. And when Jesus resurrected, because Jesus knows more than all of us, and more than all the prophets of the Old Testament, more than Moses, more than Abraham. And so the disciples came to him in chapter 1 of Acts of the Apostles, and uh, in verse 4. They came to him and they were asking him an important question. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of him. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with what? with the Holy Ghost and with fire, not many days hence. Now, look at verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Just like Isaiah prophesied. The Messiah cut off, and then he begins to reign, and Israel becoming the center of blessing. And so they were carried away with that prophecy. And so they are asking Jesus, will you at this time set up the kingdom on us and begin your millennial reign? And Jesus said, there has been an amendment. That is the period of mystery. And that is the mystery that has brought us to the church aid and brought us to where we are now. We are in, the, in an extra time, not seen by the Old Testament, between the 69th week and the, and the 70th week. There is a gap. There is a break. And that is why we... Today, we are very fortunate because after this church age, then the great tribulation will, will start. And during that time, the Holy Spirit is going to play a major role. And anybody who is not connected with the Holy Spirit will not be relevant. Did you get me? Under the church age, if you're not connected with the Holy Spirit, you will not be relevant. Because the Holy Spirit is ahead when it comes to mission work. The Holy Spirit is preeminent when it comes to evangelism. You can't know the heart of man more than the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, it said, the Spirit, when the Spirit, the Comforter shall come, it says, he shall testify of me. And he said, and ye also. That's a second class place. You are backing up what the Holy Spirit is doing. Say, ye also shall testify because I go to the Father. So the Holy Spirit is the minister of the New Testament. He's the minister of the church age. And if you are not attached to him, man, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. You can do nothing. Sometimes we are so much in a hurry. We want to go and preach. We want to go and do miracles. We want to go and do signs and wonders. And we don't have time to wait on the Lord. We have come here for this program to wait on the Lord. I'm telling you, God is going to show up. Power is going to come if you seek power as the next and the most important thing in your life. If you are too much in a hurry to wait for the Holy Spirit, or if you are too busy to accommodate the participation of the Holy Spirit in your ministry, you will be very busy achieving nothing. You will do a lot of preaching. You do a lot of preaching, but nothing is going to come out of it. So if you are too busy that you leave the Holy Spirit behind so that you can rush to where you are going, thinking that you have what it takes to touch people's lives, 
your entire ministry will be summarized as someone who was busy doing nothing and achieving nothing. Sometimes they will invite me to come to minister in a program. I remember I was preaching one day at a very big pulpit in the world. Big, very, very big one. And there's a moderator there. I'm the preacher. The choir members had finished preaching. And I'm waiting. And I'm listening. I, I wanted the Holy Spirit to go before me. And the moderator is telling me, you need to go now. Look at the time. I kept quiet. He was almost leaving his seat to come and move me to the pulpit. I kept quiet. When he saw that I kept quiet, he left me. The choir has finished singing. And what do you normally call that one? The, the play after the song. What do you call that one? Interlude, right? The interlude kept on going. The GS is over there. This my brother is here. Hey, this man is wasting time. He didn't know I was waiting for the Holy Spirit. Hmm. If I want to be punctual and come early to the stage without the Holy Spirit, I will achieve punctuality without productivity. In fact, I used to tell people, if the Holy Spirit leaves me, I'll switch off my phones and I'll look for one remote village where nobody can find me. Because I'll be completely useless on the, pul on the pulpit. Without me, ladies and gentlemen, you can do nothing. Without the impute and power of the Holy Spirit, you can do nothing. I was trying to plot my way to California from Lagos here. I decided to go check the distance between Lagos and California. It's about almost 8,000 miles. That's about 14,000 kilometers. Well, if I decide to trek from here to California, maybe one day I will get there. But it will take a long time. If I decide to swim from Nigeria to California, maybe one day we'll get there if I'm, if I'm able to escape the sharks in the Atlantic Ocean and the crocodiles. But maybe one day I'll get there. But if I decide to fly to California, it may take me just about 14 hours and I'm in California. You that is trying to do the work of God without the power of the Holy Spirit, you're like somebody trekking from Nigeria to California. But the one that has the Holy Spirit is like the one that is flying to California on a supersonic jet. Man, the Great Commission could still be achieved without the Holy Spirit, but we take so long, and in fact, so many breakdowns and accidents on the way, but with the Holy Spirit, we can achieve it faster. Amen. May you connect with the Holy Spirit. And with this understanding, when we were growing up then, I came in to this ministry, 1987. And then you can't become a worker except you are baptized with the Holy Spirit. If those who are interviewing you manage to get you into the work list, they're going to give you a tight schedule. In fact, they'll be on you every day. Why have you not received the Holy Spirit? What is happening to you? And so everybody, we were all desiring to receive the Holy Spirit. Me inclusive. We will go have vigils. I want to talk to you like a friend, like a mentor today. I want to use my experience to impact and to teach, and I believe somebody can find something there. We will go for prayer meetings waiting for the Holy Spirit. We will go for vigils waiting for the Holy Spirit. And when we go for the uh, congresses, I wasn't a congress participant, but I was going there because I wanted to connect with the spirit of that place. And when we go for retreats, we look at the retreat program, guess what are we looking for? Huh? We are looking for the message on the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost anointing and the harvest force. The Holy Ghost anointing and the character of a missionary church. We were always looking for the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we we'll pray and fast at that time when the message will come. And we were thirsty, hungry vessels. Sometimes they will bring food then at IBTC. They used to bring food for two people in one plate. I don't know if anybody here, I don't I, I don't think anybody here was around at that time. 
as a worker. If you are there, can, you, can I see your hand up? They'll put the food, two spoons. And we just finished praying over the last message, and now it is time for lunch. I'm asking, brother, do you want to eat? He says, no. You, do you want to eat? We say, no. And so we leave the food there. We get it to the bush. We are praying for the power of the Holy Spirit. Then my, my colleague got baptized. He started speaking in tongue. It's as if I have been wasting all my time in the church. I said, go look at this brother. We are praying together. We were praying together in the same place and he's been baptized and I'm not. All through those months before the Holy Ghost came, I was just a shadow of myself until December 1989 at CMS Grammar School. The message is going on. I came to the Holy Spirit, to the retreat to look for the Holy Spirit, not accommodation. Some of you, you are going to DLCC, you ask it, do you have accommodation for me? They say yes. Is there air conditioner there? Do you have fan in case they switch off the big generator? Oh, if you really desire the Holy Spirit the way you desire your comfort, the Holy Spirit is going to come. And so we are there praying. And when the Spirit came that day, I was lifted. In fact, I, my feet, I was not feeling my feet on the ground anymore. It was not just speaking in tongues. There are some people that speak in tongues that they are still stealing. They are speaking in tongues, they are still uh, prostituting. They are speaking in tongues, they cannot say, speak the truth. This power came, that was the day I understood that the Holy Spirit comes in measures. Are you hearing me? And the measure comes in connection with your ministry and with your mandate. If your mandate is like this, the Holy Spirit is not going to give you a measure that is like this because it will destroy you. One flame is enough. One cloven tongue as a fire is enough. And I knew I have received something. I pray that today you will know you have received something. And so I'm moving. It was, I wasn't feeling my feet on the ground anymore. You know what I did? I went to the prayer warrior camp where they were. I told them I wanted to join the prayer warrior. And they're asking me why. I said, I want to test run this anointing. I want to start handling cases that I was not able to handle before. Ladies and gentlemen, when the anointing comes upon you, then your usefulness increases and the cluster of situations and problems you can handle will increase. Nobody is going to ask you to do a task beyond your anointing. And so when the anointing came, I was like Elisha. He had just seen the departure of Elijah. He had just received the double portion. He was wearing the mantle of office as Israel's new prophet. Amen. Nobody can mess with that man or joke with him. He's coming out. Everything he says after the anointing uh, is directed by the Holy Spirit. They ask him, first of all, before we start dealing with you, where is Elijah? Can you confirm that Elijah is still alive? Because if Elijah is alive, we cannot work with you. You can't handle Elijah's office. And so satisfied that Elijah was gone, they knew that Elijah was carrying an anointing. That was when they gave him the task. The situation of this city is pleasant, as you can see, but the water is not. Nobody asked him to do that before until the anointing came. May the Lord help you to do greater things. And so I enlisted, I became a member of the prayer warrior. Before you can say Jack Robinson, I was made their leader in this axis. And then I noticed something, miracles started happening. When the Holy Spirit comes the way he should come, and you receive the measure you should receive, don't ever think that you get anointing and power on equal basis. It doesn't happen. All animals are equal, but some animals are what? Are more equal than the other. God looks at your future before he loads you. If you are going to drive from here to Bagada, man, you can just buy petrol of 5,000 naira. You'll be there. But if you are driving from here to Kanu, you have to go with a full tank. And you might reload on the way. God did not give the spirit to, the, to Jesus by measure because his ministry was very, very broad and wide. 
God looked at Saul of Tarsus. He knew that this man was going to carry his name. Hallelujah. Not just a gospel. He's going to a body Christ. He's going to carry Christ. He's going to preach Christ in palaces everywhere. And uh, the day the anointing came upon that man, you know what God said about him? It's a chosen vessel. vessel. For me, my own chosen vessel. He said, it will bear my name all over the world. You can't receive that kind of anointing if all you are going to do is just to be a good usher. Just to clean the church. Man, if you like, go to the mountain and pray for 70 days with your Dick's Bible. Huh? Dick's annotated. Or you go with uh, Amplified Bible, whatever you go with. You go and stay there, send the power. Holy Ghost, I need power. I need power. The Lord will check quickly where you are going before he gives you the means for your journey. If you come to me and you say, I'm going to Ibadan, I'll give you maybe 5,000 naira or 10,000 naira. But if you come to me and you say, I'm going to New York, I'm going to, I'll give you more money. Because your journey will demand the transport money you are going to have. You call it T-Fair, Abi. God is going to give you more T-Fair your journey is, is far. The Lord must have looked at me and he said, this man is going high. And so the anointing came. Then we started praying. We started praying. This time around, everything was different. They made me a house leader. I noticed when I used to pray before or preach, I would pray, I would be looking for the verse that is suitable for the person I'm trying to reach. But now, after the Holy Spirit, I'll pick the Bible, the Spirit will just point me to the verse. Go to this place. And sometimes, I, I don't know, I may just hear one line. I don't know where the chapter and the verse is. As I just open my Bible, lo and behold, that is the place. I finish, the person begins to cry. He begins to repent. He begins to weep. He begins to say, what is the next thing? What do you want me to do? What would God have me do? And so from house fellowship, I became a chartered house fellowship leader. I will finish from here for one year. From four in membership, they become 16. They will say, I became an evangelist, in short. They will move me from one house fellowship to the other. Before you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, I became an area leader. And before you knew it, I became a Zona leader. All this without any interview. Because everywhere I go, revival happens. Miracles happen. Signs and wonders begin to happen. And then the word of knowledge. I went to one district at, a, at a Bagada. I was preaching. And that was the day I could recollect the very first word of knowledge. Because when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, it gives you gifts. Are you hearing me? The gifts of the Spirit. Can, you, can we mention them? You have the word of wisdom, uh -huh. word of knowledge, working of miracles, healing and deliverance, discernment of spirits, tongues and interpretations. I finished preaching. I wanted to go sit down. The Lord said, go back to that stage and tell them there's someone there that just got married recently. In a small church, they were not up to a hundred. He said, tell them there's someone there that just got married and they've been expecting a child. No conception. They give them a gift. So I saw a big snail painted like a painting on a canvas, but there was nothing inside the snail. He said the gift was intended to ensure that no matter how long they stay together, there will be nothing from that marriage. You know, a small boy, half size of the crowd, they were not up to, up to 100. So how will I make this announcement that is so specific? So I decided to go sit down. The spirit said, no, go back there and announce, make this announcement. So I came back a little bit afraid. So I said, you just got married and you are here this morning. Uh, this evening, they gave you a gift. And as I'm talking, I'm seeing more. I saw their room. I saw their bed. They, tied, they, they were using one room. Um, they divided it so one part becomes a parlor. I saw the place where they put all their gifts. They made a wooden rack. 
and they put all the gifts there. They were all wrapped. I saw that big snail, see, that, that had a rapid sheet. I saw them bringing it down and opening it and discovering an empty shell. So I finished. I was saying, oh, God, I hope uh, I have not uh, created problems for myself here today. As I was sitting down, two of them were marching forward. So they came and they said, because I said they should come forward. So they came and said, Pastor, how did you know? The big shell is in our house. That was the beginning of the word of knowledge. I could come to a place and the Lord would tell me everything that happened there before I came. I remember one day I was preaching at Elijah. I came to the stage Especially when we are starting this series. We say, we want to start another series? <laughs> that day, the devil normally prepares because he knows that that day is going to be dangerous to him and his future. So I'm coming. I just saw somebody got drowned. Wear his suit. And they were pulling him out from the water. And I saw that they pulled him out and he was dead. Then that's like a chapter. He just slept. Another chapter came now. I saw that the person has seen a sister. And I saw the sister now. They are now focusing on the sister. The same people that caused that young man to die. So I mentioned everything. I went to sit down. I finished counseling. And I'm seeing somebody over there that's waiting to see me. She is not on appointment. So she kept on waiting until I became concerned. I finished up my counselor, I was about to go. He said, go call that sister for me. And so she came. He said, Pastor, I waited to see you. I wanted to leave the church. I wanted to also leave the faith. And I'm asking God, since my son died, that if you love me so much, why did you allow my son to die? He said, but not up till, until this morning, when you came up and described exactly how my son died and also what is happening to my daughter. He said, I said to myself that if God can reveal all that to this man of God, then God can sort out the situation around my daughter. That's why I waited to see you. And so she explained to me. He said, you saw that time that somebody died and they were pulling the person out of the, of the Lagos Lagoon? He said, that was my son. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we kept on going. And then some kind of deliverances that are supernatural. I still believe that up to now that I'm loaded. Amen. I believe it. Before I come to the pulpit, I normally wait until God has spoken to me. If God hasn't spoken, I'm not going to move. I can just ask someone else to go preach. It's better you don't show up than that the Holy Spirit did not show up with you. Because that day you'll be disgraced. Don't ever undertake a mission you cannot complete. There are many ministers in the church. Don't volunteer for an assignment you cannot finish. I can be at home and someone is calling me and he says, Pastor, let's do this. I'll say, can you give me one hour? I'll call you back. The one hour is not because Pastor is very busy. All of you, you believe that Pastor is so busy that he doesn't have a minute to himself. Pastor still has some time to meditate. Pastors have some time to scan the future before they hit the future. And so I meditate. The Lord will just speak to me. He will say, you need to go there. He will tell me the number of minutes. He will tell me what is going to happen. Like this conference today, by the time we begin to pray, something is going to break out in this place. From this middle area. Hallelujah. It's not about weary castle. It's not about putting a mitre on your head. It's not even about the clothing. But it's about the kind of mantle and the kind of power you carry. That is what determines the respect. I remember one day I followed the GS. We went to a program somewhere in the university. Now he's going to preach. And the place was packed full of young people, like here. Packed full inside and outside. And I decided to go stay at the back. I wanted to find out what is actually responsible for the miracles in the life of this, our daddy. So I'm sitting at the back. He just came to the stage and he was talking normally as he normally talks. He's talking normally. Then 
in the middle of the ministration, I just, be, I, I felt an anointing came down at the very middle of the hall. And after that, things started happening. Everywhere started shaking. Like it's going to happen here today. Today is your own Pentecostal hour. Are you thirsty for the Holy Spirit? Are you expecting something? Are you waiting for something unusual? Then what you are expecting, you will get. You will not live here today until the power comes upon you in baptismal measure. And then we went for mission work. By now, I was already a principality. Do you understand that? A principal. It's good you encourage yourself. The things you say to yourself, they are more important than what people say about you. Because those who are speaking about you, they don't really know who you are. I believe you know yourself. I believe you know who you are. For they that do know their God, they shall be what? Strong. And they shall do what? Exploits. I will go for mission work. I'll be preaching. There will be people, nationals from various countries. I just speak for like 30 minutes. Then there's a connection. There's a release of power. And people are getting converted. And ministries are started. I told my father and the Lord one day, I said, I've discovered that God can open shop anywhere in the world, provided he can find the right person. I pray you'll be the right person. When you come to a country without the Holy Spirit, the country will not be worried. But if you come with an anointing and you're a principal, everybody, every power in that country, they become afraid. When we were trying to open shop in Puerto Rico, we were doing evangelism on the streets. I've never seen a country like Puerto Rico. When you are preaching to them, they will listen. They are very polite. They can hear you for one and a half hours. You finish, and you are asking, do you want to give your life to Christ? He says, no, I don't want to give my life to Christ. Uh, why? Uh, because it seems you are saying, I will still go to do them. So when I'm ready, I will, I will find you. Where's your address? When you are, I will come and find you. Because I'm still going to drink today. I still have a girlfriend. All the things you are talking about, I'm not ready for the rapture. I know I understand, but I will, I will give, when I'm ready, ah, I will look for you. So he goes. You go to another person, even a child, you finish, you want to give your life to Christ. The child, being a child, raises up the hand. The father will say, what are you doing? Why are you raising, your, raising up your hand? Put down your hand. Even children, we could not win. Then one day, because I normally will pray, I'll be facing the forest. I have a little forest at the back of my house. I like, I like nature. I like nature. I'm praying facing the forest. Oh Lord, why are we here? We are going to three months now. We have not won a single soul. We have a big church, but there are no members, like Nigeria, with big airports, but there are no planes. And I'm wondering, when is this revival going to happen? My neighbor that we, we, we came together from Nigeria, he will be telling me every day, Pastor, let's be praying together. I wanted to please him. We we'll pray together. He doesn't know that. I don't sleep at night. I hardly sleep at night. Then one day, the Lord woke me up. He said, stop praying all these prayers you are praying. He said, don't you know you are a principality in this country? Tell me where you want the church to start and decree the church to start and the church will start. When I heard that, I just closed my Bible. I came to my brother. I said, listen, when are we going back to Nigeria? He said, next week. I said, church will start this Sunday. So he looked at me. He said, how will it happen? I said, you will see now. On Sunday will be church here and members will be in this church. I finish with you at your level. Let me go and concentrate at the higher level. Hallelujah. When the anointing gets to a certain level in your life, you begin to converse at a higher level. We have an interior board meeting the other time. One of them accused me. It's like there's another meeting going on between you and somebody. I said, Of course, now. How do you think I'll be the head of this, the acting chairman of this big organization without communicating with somewhere? I have to communicate now. You need to have some powers that are undetectable. Powers that they cannot find. But the power is there. Because he that is with you, is with you. He will not leave you alone. 
Sunday came. Before that Sunday, on Saturday, we went, we went for shopping. One of them, those people that normally greet us, he said, are you Pastor Andrew? I said, I was surprised. I said, yes, I am. How do you know me? He said, I know you'll be in the country for like about going to three months now, right? I said, yes. But we'll be hearing all those publicity about deeper life, deeper, deeper Christian life ministry. But we're not really interested in going because a lot of churches have come to this country and have deceived us. I'm looking for a place where the power of God is, man. <laughs> I said, you are looking for where the power of God is? What kind of power are you talking about? He said, raw, immediate. Power, as of old. I said, you are talking to the right person. I said, I'm the person. He said, eh, all right, on Sunday we are going to come to check you out. On Sunday, she came with three other persons or, or thereabout, and we're eight in number. Service have started. Hallelujah. After the service, she came to me. He said, I've never been in a service like this my entire life. You know what? I'm going to do publicity about this, your church. Do you guys have Bible studies on, on Wednesdays? I said, yes. Wednesday came. We were 14 in number. You know how we became 14? You know, when the Spirit of God has given signal, the signal will trigger something in the environment. Everything started shaking. On, on a Tuesday before that Wednesday, okay, Wednesday in the morning before the Bible study, they came to my house. They said, please come, come and pray for someone who wants to commit suicide. Please come, come, come and pray. Are you a pastor? Yes? Okay, please, please come, come. They've never done that before. And so they brought a vehicle. We went to the place. I sat down. I looked at the place. They just told me something. I said, look, come here. I said, this is what happened to you recently. Is that correct? She said, yes. I said, okay, this is what you want to do today. She said, yes. I said, but how did you know? They gathered all the people in the house, in the apartment. He said, please, all you guys, we have found somebody that can explain what is going on in this family. So they came with Philip, all of them came to church that, that evening. And they told them that when you come, miracle will happen. So in the evening, 6 o'clock, the service started. I'm wearing just a normal top from Nigeria and the normal trousers and my sandals. I knew I was under pressure. Either that day establishes us or we are exterminated from the country. But everybody were expecting instant miracle. So I'm standing there. I, I still taught the Bible study the way I should teach. I finished. I said, let us pray. As we were praying, I started feeling the, a wind blowing in the small city room. And as the wind was blowing, it carried one person up. Boa on the ground. Another person, boa on the ground. And then meeting continued out of control this time around. So I stepped away from the pulpit. They kept on praying for a very long time on their own. I was just standing watching drama. We finished. The first person to rise up. You know, they have good medical facility in that country. It's not like here. You see, when, they, when Trump was shot, they didn't take him, they didn't have to take him back to Mar a Lago in Florida. They have hospitals, specialist correct hospitals at a very short distance. They have good medical facilities. So this one said, please, I have something to report here. I have been, she mentioned the sickness. It has been here for 16 years. And I've been seeing the doctors, but as I stood up from here, I am completely okay. Something is happening here. Yeah. This other one, come. This other one, come. Then they picked up their telephone. They are calling everybody they knew. Please come. The power as of old. Puerto Rico. Miracle. This is the place. This is our church. They went to the kitchen. They cleaned up our kitchen. Cleaned up all the, the city room. They went to their own standard. They started modernizing everywhere in the house. I was just sitting down crossing my leg. I have become a pastor. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are not a pastor. 
if the Holy Spirit is not, if there are no signs, in fact, if there's no sign in your ministry, nobody will invite you to come and preach. It will be a, a colossal waste of time. I will not be here today if there's no anointing. You will not be relevant tomorrow if there's no anointing. And this ministry will be irrelevant tomorrow if there's no anointing. And that is why we are here. If that is why you are here, I command you connect with power. They cleaned everywhere. And they said, Pastor, you're going to stay here, okay? When are you going to Nigeria, by the way? I said, I'm going next tomorrow. <laughs> they were disappointed. I said, don't worry. When I go, another minister will come. Just exactly like myself. I tried my best to explain. Now, the church has started in Puerto Rico up to now. Hallelujah. Let me say this before we begin to pray. If there's no power in your life, nobody will come and seek you. In fact, they will, they will like you to be around. No, you don't disturb anybody. Nobody is disturbing you. So everything is okay. Now we we. The day the anointing comes, eh, they will begin to persecute you. They will begin to fight against you. They will begin to declare war against you. But the Bible says they shall surely fight against you, but they cannot prevail against you. Because I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, says the Lord God Almighty. The next day, come and see police. That was the day I knew all the different uniforms of the United States police. They are the one they call Coast Guard. The United States Coast Guard. They are the one they call State Police, State Troopers. They have FBI. They have firefighters. All of them came to my house. And they were drawing pistol. I was outside. They were drew their pistol. And they said, uh, hey, you there, come out, come out. I said, what for? I said, when well, they came to report you at the police station that you went to somebody's house to go and rob. <laughs> I just laughed. I said, B, I said, yes, okay. If you need me, then you got to get inside this property because this is our house. I'm not going out. I'm not going nowhere. So I continue my watering. He pulled his pistol. Policemen, all kinds of sirens I've never seen in my life. They were blurry around our house because they want to come and arrest Pastor Oboru. Because we have changed the environment. Unilag, even this environment, it changed forever. Faith district is changed forever. Everything about your future is changed forever. And so I remained there until my landlord came and my Spanish interpreter that was sleeping inside the room under an air-conditioned uh, place. He had him say, what? So he came out. They are speaking, <laughs> they are speaking a lot of Spanish. He said, what do you mean? This man is a reigning missionary in the United States. You want to arrest him? And the next moment, all of them ran away. Jumped into their vehicles and ran away. And they were asking me, do you want to press charges? I said, no, I know what is happening. Because what is happening cannot be visible to the eye. I know what is going on. There's a war. There's a war. There's a spiritual warfare. The enemies will fire. We will fire. But they will surrender. Are you ready today? You see, the kind of prayer you want to pray now will determine what you receive. Are you hearing me? See, when Zion travels, Jesus brings forth a song. You ask yourself, what have I brought forth? Maybe all you'll be seeing is noise, but there's no voice. What have I really done? Has there been any revival associated with my ministry? You sing, people are happy with the song, but do they go beyond that into bearing fruits? You see leaves, but you don't see fruit. How long are you going to I always like when people are saying, power of God is moving. I'm very observant. I want to see how the power of God is moving. I want to see something unique about your life. I want to see the of the spirit. I want to see the manifestation of the anointing. I want to see how you branch off. I want to see the product around you. I want to see the effect of your ministry. And today, the Lord is going to start a new thing. Can you pray now? You can take any position. You can stand. You can sit. But please don't live here without connecting with the Holy Spirit. I told you, if the Holy Ghost is gone, I will not risk any ministry. I'll go and say one desert, one, one village. 
and I'll be, I will not want anybody to contact me because if they do, I will not be able to do anything. Have you received the Spirit since you believed? Have you been so connected and, 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 and completely enveloped by the power of God that you can call yourself a minister of God? You can't be a minister of God except you first of all become a man of God. And you cannot become a man or a woman of God until the Holy Ghost fills you. You cannot do anything under the New Testament economy without the power of the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is the evangelist of the church age. Now talk. Let God hear you now. Connect. Because today you will be baptized. I did not come here to tell you about Holy Ghost baptism. I come here so that you will be baptized in, in the Holy Ghost and in fire. Oh yeah. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Now, the heavens are open. What are you waiting for? Oh, let the flame come your, on your head. Now, uh huh. You can't be alone now. He says, I'm not alone because the Lord is with me. You cannot be alone. Why are you alone? Hey! Did you not hear what I said? Receive! Receive the fire! 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 I told you what I saw from the middle there. There's an atomic bomb to break in pieces. Holy Ghost fire hey, everything on its way. Everywhere. Uh huh. Receive the fire. Holy Ghost from your head to your toe. You cannot escape. Holy Ghost fire. You cannot escape. Everywhere. Because the Lord has selected you. Stretch forth your hand to heaven. Stretch forth your hand to heaven. Holy Ghost fire. Stretch forth your hand to heaven. Everywhere. Stretch forth your hand to heaven. Holy Ghost fire. Stretch forth your hand to heaven. Oh fire. How will you live here? Holy Ghost fire born. How will you live here? Everywhere. What will you say to the people? What will you say to them back home? What will you say to them in your church? Oh fire. That you came here and you received nothing. Holy Ghost fire born. Oh yeah, connect. Everywhere, all over. Oh fire. Connect the power. Oh fire. Connect the true fire. Connect the raw anointing. Connect the raw fire. Holy Ghost fire. Connect the raw power. Everywhere, all over. Oh fire. Hey. Oh fire. Holy Ghost fire born. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when the day of Pentecost was done. We cannot conclude the same way we started. 
Receive the fire. 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 We cannot have a normal meeting again. We cannot have a normal meeting. Ah, the future is waiting for you. The destiny is waiting for you. The doors are waiting for you. The mission field is waiting for you. You cannot live here the same way you came. What are you waiting for? Get connected. Get liberated. Aha. Let it flow. Let it flow. Aha. Aha. Let it flow, let it flow. Hey, 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 let it flow, let it flow. Oh, let it flow right here, right now. What are you waiting for? Let it flow, let it flow. What are you waiting for? Let it flow, let it flow. What are you waiting for? Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow right here, right now. Receive the fire. As the river flow. Receive the fire. We begin to bring every day to life. And what are the gifts? It's a like a river. Where are your children? Oh, right here, right now. Hey! And as hey. the river flows, hey. we begin to bring hey. every day to life. Hey. It's hey. a like a river. Hey. Oh, let it flow hey. right here, right now. Hey. The yeah. wind. The weed, the weed, the weed, the weed, the weed, and the fire is a life giving river. Oh, let it flow right here, right now. Hey, this is the time. My belly. This is the hour. 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 Out of my belly. Hey. 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 Rivers. Hey. Rivers. Hey. Of the water. Hey. 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 For the day. glory of God, out of my belly, shall flow. We we'll come back again, as it was in the days gone by. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 it's not the power of the might. As the river flows, it's not the power but the power of the might. But by my spirit, by the spirit. Oh, let it flow right here, right now. By my spirit, as the river flows, receive. You will begin to speak in an unknown tongue. Right here, right now. I said, go ahead, begin to speak. From my to my speak. Head, speak. To my to my speak out. From my to my speak. Declare. The speak. From speak my now. To my speak. 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 The spirit of our earth. Hey, another man. When the anointing calls upon you, another man. 
You cannot be ordinary. Everything that goes on you that is not of God, I command be consumed by fire right now. The fire will Intensify. come from heaven Intensify. and ignite your spirit. Ignite my 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 spirit. Hey, hey, hey. It is coming out. Ignite my spirit. Ignite my spirit. You have been waiting. You have been expecting. You have been praying. Ho! You came here to get connected. Now I say to you, be connected by the power and the fire of the Holy Spirit. You will never walk alone anymore. You will never walk alone anymore. You will never walk alone anymore. You will not be empty anymore. You will never walk alone anymore. Until we are we are we are
that for us to be relevant, we need to be connected in the spirit. You will only remain a shadow of yourself if you are not connected to the spirit. Holy Ghost, connect, connect, intensify, connect this morning. Draw from the word this morning. Drop from the word this morning. The act of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. Draw. Why don't you draw? Draw more. Draw more to our feet. And to our feet to overflow. Draw. Draw this morning. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts. Set our hearts on fire. Come and do what you do. Yeah, we know what to say. 
say this please I personally came to this conference to receive a touch from God and when I came in here yesterday there was one word that the Lord drops on my mind and he said Irakbada and Irakbada means a recovery a, re a, re a restoration and when our father in the Lord was preaching again he was came back said in our father and he says I should mention it to you that there will be a restoration a restoration of their gifts a restoration of their positions a restoration of the anointing a restoration of their power that is what the Lord is doing in your life. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you because you are not a man that you should lack. You told us to come together. And we have come together. Lord, you have been present here since yesterday. And Lord, you have moved in our midst. We have witnessed restoration. We have witnessed recovery. We have witnessed rebirth. A lot of places that the fire has gone down, we have witnessed refiring. There has been refueling. There has been revival. There has been gifting, Lord. We return all the glory unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that this fire will continue to burn. 
it will continue to burn in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Our altar will not be dry. Lord, let there be a recovery in the mighty name of Jesus. For those that have lost their position in Christ Jesus, let there be a recovery in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, because we know you have answered our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. 